January 4th, 1931. W. Dyer. My name is William Dyer, and I'm a professor of geology at the Miskatonic University, Massachusetts. Our mission in the Antarctic is to conduct several geological surveys and, soil properties permitting, archaeological digs on parts of the continent that haven't been explored by previous expeditions. After several gruelling weeks at sea aboard the Arkham, we have finally reached our destination. Following the unloading of the expedition's cargo, the ship is to make the return trip to bring further supplies. Aside from the usual reports on our surveys, I will keep a diary and instruct several key members of the team to do the same. Antarctica is, for all intents and purposes, a new scientific frontier, and I want to preserve even the minutest of details for posterity in case our expedition fails under unforeseen circumstances. January the 10th, 1931. W. Dyer. We erected a rudimentary shack for the team with the supplies we brought. It should prove a better shelter than the number of tents we had to spend the last six nights in if we intend to stay for as long as we have planned, which is several weeks. The Arkham is scheduled to return in 14 days with supplies. January the 12th, 1931. W. Dyer. While we studied what lies within the cave, Mr. Gedney was able to erect the drilling apparatus and promptly excavated several fossils, mostly things like seaweeds and trilobites. These discoveries align with the strata they were found in, but they are, of course, exciting nonetheless. What is remarkable, though, is an enormous fossil that Mr. Gedney was able to unearth. It seems to be the imprint of a gigantic, hitherto unknown species of five-sided starfish. January the 11th, 1931, W. Dyer. 
After successfully establishing a base camp and setting up a basic hut, my research assistant Dan Forth and I have set out to inspect this conspicuous cave entrance, then marched on. What we found inside must be seen to be believed. A construct of some kind, then an entrance leading further into the darkness, all built in stone. It must have been built by an ancient people thousands of years ago. I have yet to find an answer to the question of how they possibly could have arrived, let alone how they sustained themselves in Antarctica. How were humans of yore able to stay alive in such a hostile environment, not to mention to erect such an imposing structure? January the 13th, 1931, W. Dyer. After examining the structure further, we surmised that it must be far more ancient than we initially believed. The open entrance features what appears to be a door-like mechanism, but there does not seem to be any obvious way of operating. There is a five-sided hole at the center of the platform, about 10 inches wide, which suggests that something is missing, an object which can be inserted into it. January the 16th, 1931, W. Dyer. We've found a strange object embedded in the ice, not far from the entrance. It's a five-sided cylinder, primarily made of stone with a star-shaped top. It has metal trimmings, a gemstone embedded in its top side, and its five sides are marked with strange symbols. This newly discovered object fits the hole of the pedestal in front of the door perfectly, but inserting it doesn't seem to have any effect. I can only speculate, but I assume it functions like a key to open the door should it close. January the 13th, 1931, W. Dyer. I finally found some time to inspect the mural inside of the structure and more closely. What's portrayed here must be an elaborate joke because the alternative frightens me deeply. It depicts several winged creatures. Their bodies are cylindrical. Their heads are almost star-shaped and they have several appendages that remind me of cephalopods. They are held up by an amoeba-like mass. Below this, there is what I can only describe as a simplified map of the solar system. The mass to the left may represent the sun, while the circles to the right of it may represent certain planets. The third circle, Earth, is slightly shifted upwards, possibly to highlight it. This iconography is unlike anything I'm familiar with.